They lost to Denver. It's the NFL on Fox from Sun Devil Stadium as the Minnesota Vikings take on the Arizona Cardinals. Hi, along with Bill Romanowski, who has four Super Bowl rings in 60 years in the NFL. I'm Chris Myers. Nice to have you with us and hope you're enjoying your holiday. Well, Arizona has given up the most points in the league. They're facing in the Vikings the number one offense in the NFL. How do you think Minnesota attacks them today? Look for Minnesota to attack them running the football early. As soon as they establish the run game, look for them to play action pass and hit their favorite receiver, Randy Moss. This defense with Arizona doesn't have one, two, or three guys that can cover Randy Moss, for look, so look for him to have a big day today. Moss going to his fifth Pro Bowl. Anquan Bolden, the rookie for Arizona, going to his first. And Josh McCown, his third NFL start at quarterback for Arizona. How could he possibly keep pace with Culpepper? One thing he has to do is utilize his running backs. Marcel Shipp and Emmett Smith, utilize them. Also, when, he, when it opens up, he's got to run with the football. Keep this defense honest. The best offense is a good defense. That's what they need to do. Keep that Minnesota offense off the field. Although the Cardinals have lost seven straight, all their wins have come at home this year. You can phone home or use your Sprint phone for our virtual coach question. Log on to FoxSports.com and participate. The Vikings thinking division title. The Cardinals thinking upset. It's the NFL on Fox from Tempe. Let's go, let's go, the playoff picture, the Cowboys are going to the postseason, but it helps Seattle. They have lost to the Saints. That game just went final, and the Rams are trailing with under four minutes to go. They could lose the number one seed in the NFC. Saturday's results, you saw it on Fox. The Seahawks keeping their playoff hopes alive as they defeated San Francisco, and they'll be watching this game between the Vikings and the Cardinals rather closely. So the Rams have won the West, the Eagles have won the East, and the Panthers are in the NFC North will be decided here. If the Vikings win, they're in as the division champs. No question about it. And Mike Tice and his Vikings had a team meeting and said it was unacceptable to earn it any other way than to go out and win today and lock up the NFC North. They won't be watching the other game. Green Bay is at home with the Broncos. Arizona will receive the kick. Josh Scobie and Damian Anderson are deep. Aaron Elling to kick it off. And you see that the Saint game is final. They have defeated the Cowboys. Here's the kick, and we're underway. Scobie. Hit hard up around the 29-yard line, where the Cardinals will take over on first down. Josh McCown, his third NFL start. His passer rating has been over 90 in two of the three games he's played. And the offensive line shuffled a bit. Reggie Wells, the rookie at left tackle for L.J. Shelton, who has been an Ironman. Frank Garcia in at center. The pro bowler, Anquan Bolden. Marcel Schiff in the backfield as the Cardinals go on first and ten. This is Schiff, brought down hard for a loss. Kevin Williams, the rookie, making this hop. A check on that Viking defense, and Kevin Williams starting all 16 games, the only Viking defensive rookie to do that since Dwayne Washington. You see he has seven and a half sacks at linebacker, Greg Beaker, the veteran. Yeah, they say he's the nuts and bolts of this defense, but they really like the two young rookies, Mike Natil and E.J. Henderson. And in the secondary, Corey Chavos, the pro bowler, 27 interceptions from this Viking defense. A loss of three. Chip again. Pushing forward towards the 30. Brian Russell on the stop. That's one thing, Brian Russell comes up hard on defense. He really likes to be an aggressive player on defense. Un he thinks that's the difference. Undrafted free agent, former quarterback from San Diego State. The Vikings defense ranks 24th in the NFL, 19th against the run, 26th against the pass on third down and nine. Emmett Smith in the backfield, three wide receivers. McCow throwing for Brian Johnson. A little long and incomplete. It'll be fourth down. There's a flag on the play, and we'll check that. 
holding offense number 76. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Penalty at Cameron Spikes. Cameron Spikes right here. He 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 gets a holding against Chris Hovan. Just use, utilizes his quickness to get by him, and he has to grab him to pull him down to the ground. Viking defense does its job. Three and out, so Scott Player into punt. Former NFL Europe player, Bobby Howry, Keenan Howry, excuse me, deep to return. Howry. Couple of yards up around the 27, where the Viking offense takes over. Dante Culpepper going to the Pro Bowl. He's completed 60% of his passes in nine straight games. That is a Viking team record and credits this offensive line. They've started every game so far this year. Matt Burke, the Pro Bowler at center. And of course, Randy Moss highlights the skilled positions. Three running backs don't carry the ball today, but Michael Bennett starts. We'll see Mo Williams and Ontario Smith throughout the game. First and 10 Vikings. Culpepper throwing for Moss. And the Cardinal defense will have its hands full with Randy Moss. The defensive line, just nine sacks, but Dennis Johnson has been an ascending player. And at linebacker, Ronald McKinnon, their leading tackler. They're going to be struggling today against the speed of this offensive uh, trio of running backs. In the secondary, Ronaldo Hill and Dexter Jackson with five interceptions each. Second down, five Vikings from their own 32. Bennett in the backfield. Culpepper. Complete. That's Randy Moss for a first down. Ronaldo Hill made the stop, but it was a 12-yard pickup. Just a quick throw and catch right there, three-step drop. But Randy Moss goes up and just hooks up real quick, and they fire him the ball. What makes that play possible is the block up front. From the 44-yard line, the Vikings have a first down. On this, their first possession with the NFC North Division title within their reach. Culpepper. Throwing. Complete to Klein Saucer. Pushing forward toward the 49-yard line, stayed in bounds. Klein Saucer, 44 catches, four touchdowns, former running back at the tight end position. Dennis Johnson had a chance at him right here, but misses. Dante Culpepper, with his speed and ability to get off, throws the ball to uh, Klein Saucer, and he's able to pick up a few yards there. On second down, Bennett in the backfield. The Vikings need five. This is Bennett. He's got some room. Michael Bennett inside the 30 of Arizona. 21-yard pickup. Dexter Jackson ran about a bounce. That's one thing we said he would be able to do today is utilize his speed on the corner of this linebacking core. This linebacking core right there misses. Good block. He just has nobody there to tackle him. Good block by Bates. You know, he's a guy who only has 11 catches this year, but he's in there to block. First and 10 from the 30. Culpepper throwing for Moss. Moss has it. First and goal, Vikings. A 27-yard pickup, but a lot of Viking fans here in the desert. Right here, Randy Moss makes an outside move. And he waits, he sees the ball perfect right there, right over his shoulder, makes a great catch. Inside the three yard line, Culpepper has so far four of four for 50 yards. Randy Moss has three of them. Bennett's in the backfield, two receivers on the left side. And Bennett has it. And the Cardinals have him. It'll bring up second and goal. They go back to that same play that they ran a few earlier where uh, Michael Bennett had all kinds of running room. This time, he didn't have anywhere to go. Adrian Wilson made the stop so far. 
time consuming drive. This looks like the number one offense statistically in the NFL. Vikings want to get ahead like they did last week against Kansas City. Michael Bennett in the backfield with fine saucer second and goal from just over the three. Culpepper. Keats. Now near the goal line. That's the one thing they're able to do with Dante Culpepper because of his size and speed. 6'4", 260 pounds. They'll just run him on a quarterback draw. He'll drop back and he just tries to find the crease, try to find an opening to score. Comes up a little bit short. Culpepper has four touchdowns rushing this year, has an average of just under six yards. On third and goal, the Vikings with Mo Williams in the backfield. Mo has it, and a tough hit keeps him out of the end zone. Oh, what a hit. James Darling. James Darling, Fred Wakefield, he got leveled when he went up in there. So now the... Listen to this hit. He was met by about three, three linebackers and two defensive linemen. And the Vikings are going for it. They want to earn the NFC North title. Culpepper throwing incomplete. The Cardinal defense stops him. That's exactly what George Larry was talking to us about in the meeting. He wants Mike Tice to take the points when he can get them. Be more like a coach, not like a player. That was the player in Mike Tice coming out. A big defensive stop by the Arizona Cardinals. And George O'Leary, defensive coordinator of the Vikings, will now have his unit take the field. We're scoreless. Dave McGinnis, Cardinals stop the Vikings. And stop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. A division title on the line here in Tempe, Arizona with Bill Romanowski, Chris Myers, the Cardinal defense stopping the Vikings on fourth and goal from the one. Josh McCown and Arizona take over with Marcel Ship on the backfield. Ship. It's out across the five before the whistle blows. You see that the Rams lost to Detroit. So the number one seed in the NFC is the Eagles. Uh, yeah, you got to wonder why Mike Tice went for it there. Why not take the points? Well, as the slogan was written up on the board, as we check out Green Bay scoreless with Denver affecting this game early in the week after they beat Kansas City was let's go take it. That was the attitude Mike Tice, who played 14 years in the NFL and has a lot of player left in him as a coach, wanted to emphasize to this team, we're going to go for it, go for it, and they certainly did there. Second and five. Like we said, that was definitely the player in Mike Tice. When you have the number one offense and one yard to go, you ought to be able to make it. McCown, complete to ship. Close to a first down for the Cardinals. We'll keep an eye on that Packer game. Brett Favre at home against the Broncos. Clinton Ford is not playing. Now, remember, if Green Bay loses, the Vikings get in as the NFC North champ no matter what. There's still a chance that both the Vikings and Packers could win. And Seattle could get in as the wild card with Dallas and the Vikings, of course, winning the NFC North. Green Bay is going to have their handful, hands full today with Denver. You can put about any running back behind that offensive line and they'll get 100 yards. So they did pick Come up back. the first down. That's Marcel Schiff. Schiff to the 17-yard line. Corey Chavos made the stop for the Vikings. Kevin Williams had him in the uh, backfield, and he was able to break the tackle and pick up a few extra yards. Marcel Schiff, the Cardinals' leading rusher, comes out. Emmett Smith has come into the game on second and five for the Cardinals. Chewing up the clock. Trying to play keep away after the Vikings marched out inside the one but failed to score. This is Emmett Smith. Well, like we said, they need to keep the ball away from that Minnesota offense. You saw the way they marched right down the field, and you know they came up short on that fourth down play, but it was effortless to get down to uh, the goal line. And the play by Emmett Smith didn't that much it'll be third and about four this could be Emmett Smith's last game should he retire I I think absolutely not the guy's still enjoying the game he likes the guys he's around last week he told us he has one more year left on his contract 
he intends to uh, play out the contract. On third and four, Bolden in motion. McCown, complete. Nathan Poole made the catch and signals first down. And the officials say first down Cardinals. What they did there is they were in no backs in the backfield. They opened things up. And it was just a quick little crossing route, and they were able to hit uh, Nathan Poole. What are the thought on Emmett Smith after saying, hey, I signed a two-year contract, but certainly things didn't work out this year. If there is a coaching change, that certainly could affect things as well. Emmett remains in the backfield on first and ten for the Cardinals. <laughs> Have a penalty flag. Ball start. Offense. Five yards. Well, the microphone shorting out on our official, so maybe that's good for the guy who, who got called for the <laughs> penalty. It'll it'll bring up a first and 15 for Josh McCown. First day draft choice out of Sam Houston State, making the most of his opportunity. As Dave McGinnis said, he has proven already that he can play in the NFL, and he has said that running is what gets him in the groove, gets him into a game. He'll throw here. And that's incomplete. Looked like his arm was hit. Maybe he should have run the ball there. Jumping around as if it was a fumble. Let's see what the officials rule. I don't think he had control of the football. That might be a fumble. Never heard the whistle. We're going to have to take another look. The officials are discussing. This is a big play if McCown turns it over. The play was a forward pass rule incomplete. Second down. Let's take another look, Bill. Yes, here we go. Uh, it was definitely a forward pass. And there wasn't necessarily anybody who hit his arm. And when you talk to defensive players about McCown, they're quick to say, hey, he's a good runner. Is that like being on a blind date where they say she has a great personality? But I, I think is the question. That's one thing. His running ability at 6'3", you know, he runs 6'3", 225. He runs a 4'5". This guy can really open things up on offense with his running ability. Second and 15. McCown throws underneath. That's Emmett. Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith! Emmett Smith into Viking territory at the 45-yard line. A 36-yard pickup. And a Cardinal first down before Corey Chavos brought him down. Took advantage of that defensive front going to the quarterback. But he just drops back. All the defensive front gets up, and there's only one defender there and a bunch of offensive linemen, and Emmett just takes advantage of uh, the uh, space he has. So to the 46-yard line of Minnesota, the Cardinals will have a first down. We're scoreless in the opening quarter. Green Bay is scoreless with Denver. And again, a Viking win gives them the NFC North Division title. McCown on the run inside the 40 that's, Knock, what, that's what he does best there Chris knocked out of bounds around the first down marker and Anquan Bolden with a nice block to help him out well when this when this guy drops back and there's nothing there he turns and he runs Chris Hovan misses him there. He's not looking downfield at this point. He's strictly looking to run the football. A 10-yard pickup. It's a Cardinal first down at the 36. 327 and counting in the opening quarter. A Mar lot. I'm sorry, Chris. Marcel a lot. Schiff, that's right, bro. He's in the back. A lot of quarterbacks, when they take off running, they still still look downfield. McCown is not. He's not the guy that will look downfield when he takes off running the football. And there he stayed in the pocket, throwing for Freddie Jones, his tight end, who couldn't hang on to it, so it'll bring up a second and ten. Dante Culpepper, a guy who runs with the look of throwing as well. You talk about a, you talk about a big guy. Dante, 6'3", 6'4", you know, 260 pounds. He's bigger than most linebackers in this league, and that's what he'll do. He'll take off running, but he'll have vision downfield, and he'll just throw throw it up to a guy like Randy Moss. And the Packers are on the board. We'll keep you updated with the Broncos. Again, the Vikings say they aren't scoreboard watching. They need to win here. 
McCown throwing completed. And that's his tight end, Freddie Jones, who just didn't handle the previous pass, picking up a first down around the 10 yard line. Freddie Jones coming across the field there. That's a situation when you fake the run, you're going to see he fakes the run this way, and the linebackers have got to turn and sprint to the football, and they're slow getting to it, and he's able to make a nice play because those linebackers don't get back in coverage. And Green Bay has added the extra points to the Packers at home, leading 7 0 over the Broncos. That was a 25 yard pickup on the pass to Freddie Jones. Nice drive by McCown and the Cardinals here in a scoreless opening quarter. Marcel Ship in the backfield. Ship has it. Inside the 10 yard line, where it'll bring up second down. We'll update the playoff situation momentarily as some of the earlier scores have gone final but the important game here at least for the NFC North the Vikings and Packers Jerry Sullivan talking to him before the game he said he was going to empty the playbook today as you see he ran a screen he's running bootlegs he's handing the ball off running the football throwing the football they're really opening things up and it's paying off because they have a nice drive here second and eight this will be the 12th play of the drive McCown throws knocked away intended for Anquan Bolden that'll bring up third down and we're being told that strength of schedule because of the Dallas loss benefits the Seattle Seahawks who won yesterday on Fox so Seattle is in the playoffs so that means the only way that Green Bay can get in is if they win and the Vikings lose right there a nice I don't know why he threw that ball. It wasn't open. Yeah, he wasn't. He was double. He was in. Brian Johnson was in double double coverage against him. He shouldn't have thrown that ball. Third and eight, and a chance for defense for many of the Viking fans who are here. McCown throws has a man that's inside the five where Bolden is brought down. It won't be a first down. That's the target he needs to go to often today. And this and Bolton, you know, on those crossing routes, he's a big target, he's strong, and he's able to break tackles. He wasn't able to break that one, but it was a nice play. So the drive that began at the Arizona one yard line when they stopped the Vikings offense on fourth down, all the way to the five of Minnesota, but a 23 yard field goal attempt from Neil Rackers, who has missed three field goals inside the 40 in the last three games but this one is good a new two-year contract this week for Neil Rackers the former Bengal and the Cardinals thinking upset are ahead of the Vikings NFL Sunday is brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down make it a Bud Light Josh McCown setting up the Cardinals for the field goal and Dave McGinnis who many feel is coaching in his last game as the Cardinal head coach today will have a meeting within a week or so with the Bidwell family. I tell you what these players sure do love this guy. He is what you call a players coach and the decision that he went for the three whereas Mike Tice went for the touchdown instead. Yeah I think uh, Mike Tice the player in him came out. He wanted to go for the touchdown. Dave McGinnis gets the three points. Rackers kicks it, but it gets by Kelly Campbell into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, so the Viking offense takes over from its own 20, trailing 3 nothing in the desert. Randy Moss, who helped the Vikings move downfield the first time they had the ball, in the huddle from the 20-yard line. Minnesota trailing 3 nothing. They control their own playoff destiny. If they win, they get the NFC North Division title today. They can still get in if they lose, and the Packers lose at home against Denver. First down. Michael Bennett of the backfield. Moss. Actually, that's Culpepper throwing to Burleson, who gets up near the 30-yard line. What you have is a lot of focus on Moss, and what they do is they'll throw the quick pass to Burleson, who's in the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Marcel Ship bothered by a left shoulder, so he's going in to have it checked. Could be a tough loss for the Cardinals in this game, although Emmett Smith helped out in their drive for a field goal. 
second and two after the Burleson catch. Culpepper to Bennett. He's not going to get the first down. It'll bring up third and short. You know, you said the Cards' best defense would be to hold the ball on offense, and they had it for eight minutes in that last drive. They did, they did a great job, you know, uh, handling the ball. But the one thing I don't understand here is the Viking offense is running right into the strength of this defense. That's in between the tackles. We'll see what you, kind of adjustment they could make as the first quarter winds down. The Vikings have the football, but they're trailing 3-0 here in Arizona. Can they earn the NFC North? We'll find out when we come back. We're back, the NFC playoff picture taking shape as on third and one, the Vikings will get the first down. Michael Bennett carries. The number one seed of the NFC is the Eagles. The Rams are the number two seed. Seattle is in. The Seahawks are a wild card team on the strength of the victory tiebreaker system. And so that means that the only way the Packers can get in is if they win and the Vikings lose. And the Vikings still could possibly be the number three seed if Carolina were to lose as they play the Giants in the afternoon. Right now, Carolina leads 7 0. Ontario Smith in the backfield on first down. Culpepper to Smith. Close to a first down. Let's check in with James Brown. James? Hey, Chris, you've already given the playoff overview. It is a must win for Green Bay. Brett Favre, the magic continues. Six of six on that drive. Great concentration by Bubba Franks catching the tip ball. They are up 7-0 over Denver. Back to Chris Myers, Bill Romanowski. All right, thanks, J.B. We'll keep an eye on the uh, playoff picture. Of course, follow the NFC through the playoffs on Fox. Ontario Smith in the backfield. First down for the Vikings. Culpepper, incomplete. It'll bring up second and ten. Intended for Dwayne Bates. One thing he likes to do when he has a corner off like Ronaldo Hill was there, he just likes to make quick throws out there and let the receiver go and make something happen. Dante Culpepper going to the Pro Bowl. 24 touchdown pass this year, only 10 interceptions. Cut that from 23 a year ago. Second and ten. Smith stays in the backfield. Culpepper. Complete to Smith. He's knocked down around the 45-yard line where it will bring up third down. LeVar Fisher made the stop. So really uh, utilizing the edge passing game, just those little quick passes to the running back, picking up four to five yards. It looks like that's pretty open because they seem to be double on Randy Moss quite a bit moving safeties towards him. Everybody is aware of Randy Moss out on the field. Kobe Reinhardt, the injured Cardinal player. Vikings trying to get a first down, trailing 3-0 here in Tempe, Arizona. Third and six for the Vikings, trailing 3-0. Dante Culpepper on third down, the NFL's highest-rated quarterback. He throws. Complete to Kleinsasser, who has a first down, and there's a flag down, and another one goes down. 15-yard pickup. We'll check the call. The thing that keeps showing up is they keep faking to Randy Moss, and it opens up something else out on the field. There is no foul for defensive holding on the play. The ball was in the air. Tripping defense, number 75. 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. All right, so Mike, Mike Rosenthal called for tripping. Let's take a look, Bill. Yeah. On the, yeah, he sticks his leg up there Dennis to Johnson. get a trip on Dennis Johnson. And the Vikings have been called for more penalties than any other team in the NFL. Something Mike Tice is not happy about coming into this game, especially with the division title on the line. On third and 16. Culpepper. Culpepper trying to get the first down and has it. That's what a quarterback with speed does for you. Completely opens up the field, changes the way the defense has to play you because they got to respect your speed. 
And the Cardinals talk about putting a spy on Culpepper. Well, you can spy them all you want. <laughs> They're looking for Randy Moss over there. He gets a nice block here, but, well, the guy got in his way, and he's able to cut to the flat. 18-yard pickup, first and 10 Vikings. Ontario Smith in the backfield. Culpepper. That's Randy Moss, complete. You see that Carolina is winning, and so are the Packers. The Vikings are trailing here 3-0. If Ronaldo Hill doesn't get up on Randy Moss and try to press this guy, they will have throw and catches all day long to Randy Moss. The other corner, David Barrett, questioning Moss going over the middle, saying if he does, Dexter Jackson, our safety, will make sure he pays the price. Second down. This is Ontario Smith. First down, Vikings. One thing you don't like to see is a running back running right through the middle of your defense. Ronald McKinnon there on the tackle. You're going to see just a little draw, handoff, right up through the middle. Ronald McKinnon makes the tackle, but he makes the tackle for a five-yard gain. Ontario Smith, first rookie in team history to have 100 yards or more rushing in back-to-back -back games. First and 10 Vikings. Burke pointing. Looks like he's audibling here. This led to three touchdown passes last week against Kansas City. Culpepper. Knocked away, intended for Randy Moss. Ronaldo Hill was there. Well, he had plenty of time to throw that football. I think Randy Moss has got to come back for that football. He's got to be more aggressive. Great protection by the offensive line. He's got all day to throw. He could have stayed another two, three seconds before he threw it. And Randy Moss has got to come back for the ball more aggressively. Ontario Smith in the backfield on second and 10. Not quite in field goal range. The game is to Smith. And this is the area where Tice tells his offensive coordinator, Scott Lenahan, where this is four down territory. So he lets them know from first down on that you can think that way. Aaron Helling, Helling's range is probably from 45 yards in. Well, that attitude, that attitude hurt him because they would have three points on the board right now with that four down mentality. It's a play mentality. He needs to take points when he can get it. Third and two. Last time on a third down, Culpepper ran for it. Looks like a little blitz. He's going to get up and audible. Mo Williams in the backfield. Chances are it's going to be to Randy Moss. Just like he did last week against Kansas City. And he throws it complete. Intended for Bates. And there was confusion. Yeah, there was confusion. It was the same play that they ran last week to Randy Moss, but they ran it to Bates this time. And he, ha and he had uh, Dexter Jackson beat on the play. All he had to do is throw it up, and it would have been a touchdown. So the Vikings will try this time on a field goal attempt. Aaron Elling. This will be a 44-yarder. Again, they said his range was from 45 and in. To tie the game. The kick. It's up there. It's out there. And it's no good. Ellen misses on the Vikings. Are still trailing. While the Packers are winning at home. The Cardinals get the ball back to try and add to their 3-0 lead when we come back. And the AFC playoff picture is all set. The Bengals lost, so no matter what the Ravens do tonight, they win their division. The Colts have won their division, so Tennessee, the Titans are a wild card along with the Denver Broncos, and the Patriots and Chiefs are the top two seeds in the AFC. Yeah, you're going to watch out for those Denver Broncos as a wild card. They're going to be tough. You saw that performance last week in Indianapolis. Uh, very impressive. And the Broncos trailing without Clinton Portis at Green Bay. Now remember, if the Vikings lose here and the Packers win, Green Bay goes as the NFC North champ, and Minnesota sits home after starting the season 6-0. Cardinals with a 3-0 lead, first down. Emmett Smith near the 40-yard line. Cardinals 
course, have Marcel Schiff, who carried quite a bit in that first quarter, but the injured shoulder, and we'll see more of him. As for the Vikings, drives at 72 yards and 54 yards and no points so far. Emma Smith, pure class right there. I think he's he's probably happy Marcel Schiff hurt his shoulder and that he's going to get some a lot of playing time the rest of this game. Second and four. That's Emmett. Pushing for a couple. In four or five career games against the Vikings, Emmett Smith has had over 100 yards. Nine minutes to go here in the first half of the Cardinals with a 3-0 lead. Emmett in there fighting and scratching for every yard he can get. Mike Tice says we're playing the best football now, better than when we were 6-0. If they win, they clinch the NFC North. If Green Bay loses, the Vikings clinch the NFC North. On third and two from their own 42. McCown throws complete. Anquan Bolden has a Cardinal first down. Good job with McCown utilizing his speed on the edge. You know, he makes Kenny mix and miss right there, and he's able to fire the pass to Anquan Bolden. Just a quick throw and catch right there. Move the chains. Bolden, the only rookie going to the Pro Bowl. Every catch adds to his rookie record of number of catches in a season after breaking Terry Glenn's. McCown. Trouble. Loses the football. That's a fumble. McCown got it back. When that pack, when that pocket starts to close in on you, you got to hold on to that football. Let's get a quick check in with uh, James Brown in Los Angeles. Hey, Chris, Carolina doing its part to win the game and wind up as high as a three seed. Take a look, Jesse Palmer picked off by Ricky Manning. Ricky Manning takes it to the house, 35 yards to pay dirt, and it is a 17-0 lead by the Carolina Panthers. Back to Chris and Bill. And thanks, JP. And, of course, three weeks ago, the... Cardinals had a tough battle with Carolina right here before losing on a late field goal. Pass complete. That's Brian Johnson, the rookie from Penn State, 17th overall pick. It's one thing they think uh, Brian Johnson has really come on the last couple weeks. You know, earlier in the season, he's having trouble making plays downfield, but the shorter passes, getting getting off guys who are right up on him, trying to. Uh, you know, retard his release. He's doing a good job doing that. And last week, he made a few plays in the Seattle game. Marcel Schiff has returned to the sideline. Emmett Smith in the backfield on third down and nine. Emmett Smith lined up out as a wide receiver on the left side. A spread formation. McCown throws short and incomplete. Intended for Brian Johnson and Ken Urban there to make the stop. It'll bring up fourth down and the Cardinals prepare to punt it away to the Vikings. Yeah. Mike Natiel came off with a little blitz off the uh, defensive right side of that play. You don't see it there, but uh, you know he makes it tough for him to make a good throw right there. Mike Natiel, his uncle Ricky Natiel, former receiver with the Broncos and University of Florida player. Natiel, the rookie from Florida, player to punt. That's Keenan Howery. The fair catch at the six yard line. And the Vikings trailing three nothing. Take over after a 42 yard punt. We'll be back in a moment. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and their drivers. By Circuit City, we're with you. By WebMD, redefining modern medicine. And by Wachovia. Together, we can achieve uncommon things. Hope you're having a great holiday season with Bill Romanowski. Chris Byers here at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, where the Vikings have the NFC North Division on the line. 6.41 to play in the first half. They have not scored, trailing 3-0 from their own seven. The give is to Mo Williams, who pushes across the 10-yard line. Randy Moss has four catches for 49 yards in this game, so he is the first player in NFL history to average at least 100 receiving yards and a touchdown over the 16-game period. Talking uh, 
to Greg Beaker, their, their uh, defensive line, middle linebacker. He really likes Ran Randy Moss. He thinks he's really matured as a person, as a leader on this team. Randy Moss is the Vikings. Had a big game last week against Kansas City. On second and six, Culpepper. Throws short to Mo Williams. Up there a first down. Dante Culpepper had all day to throw the football. This is what a great offensive line will do for you. This offensive line, the same players that started every game this year. Right here, there's no pressure on him whatsoever, and he's just able to pick where he wants to throw the football, and he throws it to Mo Williams out in the flat. Arizona defense has just 20 sacks this year. Nine of those have come from the defensive line. On first down, Culpepper, quick pass, in and out of the hands of Nate Burleson at a tough hit over there to bring up second down. Our boy Dwayne Bates was not able to make that block. If he made that block... Well, the Cardinals are acting as if there was a fumble. Pass had been ruled incomplete. It is second down Minnesota. Thank you for clarifying. I think they felt like he threw the pass backwards. Lateral type. Lateral type pass to where it would have been a live ball if he did that, but... He threw it forward, and it's an incomplete. And as a defensive player, you don't take any chances? You don't. That's, that's heads-up play right there to go get that football. So Mo Williams in the backfield on second down and 10 from the 17-yard line. Williams with two tight ends in, didn't get much. It'll bring up another third down for the Vikings. This is the number one offense in the NFL, Bill, and we have five minutes to go in the first half, and they can't score on the Cardinals, who have given up the most points in the league this year coming into this weekend. They are really committed to running the football, Chris, and that's what they're doing here. I think they ought to open things up and utilize the passing game. As you saw the quick pass that they threw to Mo Williams, you know, three plays ago, they had all day to throw. That's what they need to do. Open this offense up and get it downfield. Third down for Culpepper. The Vikings need eight. Three wide receivers in. Fakes. Culpepper has it. Throwing off the hands of Pine Saucer and incomplete. That's a play you have to make, Chris. And that's one he doesn't drop very often. There's a ball a little thrown a little high, but he still should have made that catch. He rolls out, and he's standing right there waiting for that football. Just catch the football, make the play, and take the ball upfield. He doesn't make it. They got a punt. Culpepper throwing on the run. Klein Saucer usually reliable. That brings up a punt for the Vikings, trailing 3-0. And Anquan Bolden. From Leo Aragos, the rookie averaging 7.5 yards of return. Fair catches at the 45-yard line. Good field position for Arizona. Can they add to their 3 nothing lead? The NFL on Fox continues in a moment. Cardinals try to end a seven-game losing streak, and some of the players telling us on Friday at their practice, we'd love nothing more than to finish with a win and knock the Vikings out of the playoffs. Right now, they have a 3 nothing lead. Marcel Ship is back in the backfield. Emmett Smith on the sideline. From their own 45. This is Ship. Just back to the line of scrimmage. He didn't have anywhere to go there. Anquan Bolden only has two catches so far in the game. I think you got to get a little more active with Anquan Bolden. Take a shot downfield. They said that they're not going to double this guy. They don't feel he's got the speed to beat you deep but he does really well running the inside routes, the crossing routes. It brings up second and 10. Ship remains in the backfield. A cluster of receivers on the left side. McCown fakes. McCown goes down. There's a guy who, a young quarterback who did not have poise in the pocket. Was it the coverage downfield that caused him to hesitate? Okay. Anquan Bolden, they're playing off. He made a little move, but they're playing off. Why make a move 
at five, six yards when they're already playing off. You can't do that. As, that would playoffs. They need to go out there and make plays. That's what this game is about, making plays. If you want to be a playoff team, come out and throw the ball to your top receiver, Randy Moss. Stop running draws. Make plays. And, of course, the turnover right before the end of the first half was the Dexter Jackson interception, which set up the second field goal to make it 6 nothing. Dante had all day to throw that football, and he just made a bad throw, and Dexter Jackson comes up with an easy catch. And if you're the Cardinals, do you play it safe? Do you continue to pound away on the ground, or do you try to open it up and put the Vikings away? Well, the Cardinals got to open things up and keep doing what they're doing. We're getting ready for the second half kickoff as you get a look at Dante Culpepper, who last week made three audibles, adjusting at the line, and ended up making three touchdown throws out of that. You see Carolina leading as they near the half against the Giants, 27 to 10. They would nail down the three seed. Other scores, the Chargers beating Oakland. San Diego and Arizona battling for the number one overall draft pick. And here is the kick by Rackers. Kelly Campbell deep for the Vikings. Campbell across the 25 where Minnesota takes over. And the more important score, the Packers leading 10-0 as they near the half against the Broncos. These are the halftime stats. If Bill, uh, take a look in terms of yardage. I mean, the numbers are relatively close to turnovers, especially the Dexter Jackson pick hurts. But Minnesota did miss a field goal. And remember, they went on fourth down inside the one and couldn't make it. Yeah, I think they should have gone for the field goal. Go for the points in this situation. They didn't do that. And they're down the game. They... They're down six to nothing. They needed the points. They may think otherwise now. Bennett. Michael Bennett across the 33-yard line. It'll bring up second down. Remember what Mike Tice said about when Dante throws an interception? He's going to come back running the football because this guy really cares about his team and the way he plays. And if he throws an interception, he feels badly about it, and it really affects the way he plays the rest of his game. Second and short, Vikings led the NFC coming into this weekend with a plus 12 in the giveaway takeaway ratio. They're minus two today. The give is to Bennett, and he's short of the first down. Well, exactly what he said. They're going to come out running the football. You know, to try to take some pressure off of Dante. Get him back into the rhythm of the game. As soon as he gets back into the rhythm of the game, watch out, because they're going to start throwing the football deep. Culpepper had been so patient throughout the course of this season, not trying to do too much. He may have to win this game. Seven, eight, nine, Vikings have struggled on third down. This is a long one they need with Mo Williams in the backfield. Culpepper. Pass is tipped away and almost intercepted. And that brings up fourth down for the Vikings, and he did not look confident on that play. David Barrett. I just uh, don't understand this play calling. But you're going to see a tip there, and then David Barrett almost comes up with that interception. Third down and one. Go back to what got you to third and one, and that's running the football. Leo Aragus into punts. Anquan Bolden back. Eddie Johnson is still on the roster, just inactive. A punter who had problems. So Aragus brought on and the fair catch by Bolden at the 27-yard line. The Cardinals have a 6-0 lead. They're going to try and add to it when we come back. It's brought to you by Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. Welcome back. Dennis Johnson right here. He helps anchor the edge to this defense. He gets a deflection right there, and they're almost able to come up with that interception. The one thing about Dennis Johnson, he played high school football in the second and third grade. And there he is. Can you believe as a second grader, he was five foot six, 135 pounds. They changed the rules in grade school at Kentucky, and his family is in from Kentucky watching this game. Now he goes at maybe 6'5", 270, and helping this Cardinal defense shut out the Vikings. Marcel Schiff on first down for Arizona. Brian Russell made the stop. Yeah, with Dennis Johnson, 
they uh, his his dad was the high school coach then and he used to make him go against seniors and he would go drill after drill until he didn't get knocked on his butt by a senior well the Cardinals as you look there to be in second grade it'd be five six and 135 pounds that's intimidating I'd let yes, him play it second down and ten for the Cardinals they're protecting a six nothing lead and you know that's not safe with the Vikings one flick of the wrist could change that so they're trying to get more the give is to Marcel ship and he goes nowhere oh did he get hit by Greg Beekert on that play Kevin Williams helping helmet. out helmet to helmet <laughs> Greg Beekert right here Steps in, makes a big collision right there. Beaker, the X Raider, who may have slowed a step, but they want him on the field because of his knowledge of the game. Oh, he, he's a student of the game. I, I played with him for a couple months out in, in Oakland, and he is he's a true professional. He's a true pro. Third and ten, the Viking defense with Evan Smith in the backfield. Trying to put pressure on McCown. It's incomplete and nearly intercepted. Kenny Mixon was there on the pass. Lance Johnstone, another X Raider, who has eight sacks to lead the team applying the heat on McCown. Lance, Lance Johnstone came off the corner and made a really nice hit. You're going to see it here. He backs up. He doesn't have much time to throw, and Lance Johnson is able to get in and make the make the hit and affect the throw. Keenan Howery to return. And Howery goes down at the 32-yard line. Lamar Woods helping to make the stop after the Scott player punt. The Vikings need an answer. We'll see if they have it. The only playoff spot left to be decided while you're watching it right here. It's the NFC North. And the Vikings, if they win, they're in. If they lose and the Packers lose, they're in. But if Green Bay wins and the Vikings lose, then Minnesota would be out. The top two seeds, the Eagles first, the Rams second. Ontario Smith in the backfield. On first down, Smith, the rookie. Not much happening there. And the Vikings having trouble. They've lost 15 of their last 16 on grass. And there's the owner of the Vikings who has had the team up for sale. I don't know if he's very happy with the way this his team is playing today. Well, he's happy that a lot of Viking fans have made their way out to cheer on the team. But they haven't they've had nothing to cheer for. Hoping for a new stadium in Minnesota. Set an attendance record this year at the Metrodome, where the Vikings are a different team. The pass to Ontario Smith. Nice screen that nets a first down for the Vikings. Really nice play. What what they did is they faked the reverse to Randy Moss, and then they threw a screen pass. Here, here's what you'll see. You'll see a fake, fake reverse. He just holds it and throws a little screen pass. There's the fake there. Then he throws the screen pass there. Vikings pick up the first down. And they're at the 49-yard line of Minnesota. Smith average. He came in averaging 5.4 yards a carry. The rookie from Oregon, teammate of uh, Keenan Howery at Oregon. Had a really big game last week against Kansas City. Three touchdowns, 148 yards. That's when Michael Bennett was resting his ankle. Michael Bennett is in the game. Vikings are trailing 6 0. The NFC North within their grasp, but they need to win. Somebody jumped in the flags fly. Looks like Rosenthal, Rosenthal or Klein saucer. Offense, number 71. Five yard penalty remains first down. That was the right guard, David Dixon. David Dixon at age 34. <laughs> only player remaining from that 98 offensive right line. He actually played with Mike Tice when Tice was <laughs> spending one of his 14 years as a player. And again, the Viking penalties adding up. Most of the NFL. First and 15. Culpepper. Dante Keeps. They did a really good job. What they did is they faked the blitz on this play. They faked the blitz. They got up 
Well, there's a guy hurt Calvin on the, uh, Pace, uh, Calvin Pace. Uh, number one draft pick, one of the two first rounders by the Cardinals in Payne. But I think uh, Culpepper thought he was going to get a blitz. It affected what he did. Tried to run with the football and didn't make it. Dante Culpepper and the Vikings need points. We'll be back. Calvin Pace trying to work out the pain. Kenny King will replace him. In pursuit right there. He just needs Dante Culpepper's helmet. And he's, uh, you know, walking off the field with a little limp there. Second and 11. Vikings trailing 6 0. Michael Bennett in the backfield. Culpepper. Oof. Throws. That's Klein Saucer. Pulling forward for a first down inside the 40. The Viking fans that are here let out a big cheer. They booed moments ago when the Packers score was shown here. 10-0 Green Bay leading at the half. Nice on this. Just a little, little quick uh, pass to the flat. And this guy really fights for some extra yards. He's got great blocking in front of him. Bounces off one hit by Dexter Jackson and picks up an extra three yards. Pickup of 13. This is the range where four down territory fits into Mike Tice's chart. Culpepper. Complete. Inside the 30. Dwayne Bates makes the catch near another first down. And it is a first down for the Vikings. Great blocking by that offensive line. He has had all day to throw that football today when he sits in the pocket. When he gets out on the edge, that's when they've put pressure on him. I think he ought to stay in the pocket a little more. He's got more time there to make his throws downfield. As you see other scores from around the league, Baltimore is in the playoffs. The Bengals missed the postseason after losing. Here it's a first down, trailing 6 0. Culpepper. Complete. Bates again on the left side. Another Viking first down. Now, are they doubling up Randy Moss? Is that why Bates is available? Uh, they're doubling Randy this whole game. They're, they're rotating coverage to his side. But what he does there is exactly what we said. Stay in that pocket, which you have plenty of time to throw the football and make your throws. You're going to see here. Great job with this offensive line protecting. He has all day to throw that football, and that's what enabled him to make that throw and catch. First down, Culpepper 4-4 four four on this drive for 48 yards. The give is to Bennett. Bennett, Michael Bennett, near the goal line. David Barrett making the stop. The Vikings are knocking on the door. 15-yard pickup. You're going to see Randy Moss make a nice block on this play. Right there against David Bear. He just stands there and pushes him out of the way. Michael Bennett makes a nice spin move against Dexter Jackson to get down to close to the goal line. First and goal. Mo Williams. It's a touchdown and a flag down. We'll get a check on the penalty. Vikings shut out through the first half here in the third quarter. Get into the end zone, pending the penalty. Minnesota, remember the opening drive, drove inside the one of Arizona. You're going to see on fourth down and three. They got a player trying to get off the field there. So I think they Illegal had too many men. Defense, the 12th player ever got off the field prior to the snap. This penalty is declined. Touchdown. And the Viking fans here cheer. Too many men on the field. Legal substitution against the Cardinal defense. We have a tie game. Aaron Elling with the extra point to give the Vikings the lead. Eight plays, 67 yards. Culpepper, four out of four. Minnesota has the lead, and they can feel the NFC North Division title. Fans are Viking fans, and they're happy now. They've been patient. Shut out until Mo Williams' fifth rushing touchdown of the year gives them a 7-6 lead. Elling to kick it off. 
Back to receive. Josh Scobie. Up near the 34-yard line of the Cardinals. Josh McCown has managed this team, but the Cardinals have wasted scoring opportunities. And now they find themselves behind. Well, they are behind. They played a they played pretty well the first half, but they got to score touchdowns. Field goals aren't going to work if they're going to beat this Minnesota team because Minnesota can put too many points on the board too quickly. Chris Holvan looking in. Trying to put heat on McCown, whose brother Luke from Louisiana Tech played in the Blue Gray game, is here visiting. Josh McCown has it. And throws incomplete. It'll be second down. You've been in this situation before as a defensive player with a lot on the line, the momentum, the shift. Right here, Anquan Bolden. They're playing off him. And he comes back. He's open, but he's just not able to get the ball to him. And the Vikings seem as if they're a little bit more comfortable now. Yeah, I think they've settled into this game a little bit. Nice drive, marching down the field, putting a score on the board. I think this is going to be a great second half for this Viking football team. Second and ten, and if they win, the NFC North Division title is theirs. The give is to ship. And the Cardinals playing a little bit conservatively here. In fact, I get the sense both teams are playing this conservatively. Well, the Vikings opened things up a little bit with those passes into the flat on that last drive. But I, Arizona has got to open this thing up and get the ball downfield and get the ball to Anquan Bolden. Backup quarterback Gus Ferrat next to Dante Culpepper. Ferrat stepped into the two and a half games when Culpepper was out injured and kept the, uh, the Viking ship rolling along. Third and seven. Vikings with a one point lead. The Packers are leading against Denver. McCow. Ball is in the air. And it appears that the officials haven't given a signal if that's a fumble or an incomplete pass. Either way, the ball is going to the Vikings. Lance Johnstone applying the heat. Lance Johnstone coming off the corner right here. Just beats. Beats Reggie Wells with a speed move. Makes a big hit on McCown. Reggie Wells starting at left tackle for L.J. Shelton, whose streak of 1,817 consecutive snaps was broken because of an ankle injury. Keenan Howry on the return as a flag flies. He goes down at about the 35-yard line. Packers have that 10-0 lead with 11-20 to play in the third quarter in Green Bay. If they win and the Vikings win, Green Bay misses the playoffs and Minnesota gets the NFC North. If both lose, Minnesota gets the NFC North. The only way the pack gets in is if the Vikings lose and Green Bay holds on to their During lead. the kick, personal foul, grabbing the face mask, receiving team number 21. By rule, this penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick, 15 yards. First down. So the call against another Viking penalty moves the ball back. They have it, and they have the lead. This is Russian Jones taking a little advantage right here. Holding this guy up, just grabs grabs the face mask and takes a 15-yard penalty. Backs the Vikings up to their own 15 on first down. Fourth penalty of the game for Minnesota. 124 this year, the most called on any team in the league. The give to Michael Bennett. He loses yardage as Kenny King in to bring him down. That's one thing with Michael Bennett. He's not a real nifty running back. He's the guy who can really hit it fast when there's a big opening. But if he has to make a move, he's not as effective in that kind of situation. A check of the offense and the guys who have put up the numbers. Only one touchdown for the number one ranked offense coming into this game. Mo Williams got that. But it's so far enough to have the lead with 4.50 to go here in the third quarter. Second and 12. Culpepper. Throw it for base and that is complete 
He stayed in bounds up near the first down marker. Dwayne Bates, who was a high school teammate of Corey Chavis. And Pocket South pass Carolina. right here. He's got a lot of time. Bates just makes about a 10 yard, 12 yard out, makes a big catch right there. What makes that play possible is the amount of time that Dante Culpepper has to throw the football. Third and two for the Vikings. That's Burleson in motion. Culpepper gives to Mo Williams, who has the Viking first down. When they need a tough yard, that's who they're putting in the game. You saw down in the goal line, he was the one who ran the football. He's their tough runner. He's the guy that can run someone over when he's got the ball in his hands. A win gives the Vikings the NFC North. Of course, if Green Bay loses, they also can win the division. On their last drive, six of the eight plays on that drive produced a first down. Five of the plays were for more than 10 yards. Here, they get another first down. He's audibling right here at the line of scrimmage. I think he doesn't like what he sees. Culpepper to throw. Bounces the pass in the middle of the field. It'll be second and ten. And Culpepper pointing as a flag does fly. There will be no foul for intentional grounding as number 23, 23 was in the area. The flag will be picked up, second down. The officials all over it. Michael Bennett was in the area. Well, I, th I think he had a run play called, and he audible to this play here. And he just backs up, and it's a little screen pass, and there's a lot of red shirts there ready, ready to stop the play for Michael Bennett. Speaking of red shirts, the Cardinals wearing all red for the second time in their history. It was owner Bill Bidwell's idea to trot it out. They tried it late last year on second and ten. Bennett. Knocked down around the 30-yard line. It'll bring up a third down for the Vikings. Ronaldo Hill in on the stop. Like we said, Michael Bennett needs running room to break him. There, he's not as nifty as Mo Williams or Ontario Smith. Ontario Smith can make people miss. Made a lot of people miss last weekend when they played the Chiefs. Mo Williams is in. He's their leading rusher this season. On third and six for the Vikings. Green Bay is winning. The Vikings with a one-point lead. Culpepper. Pressure. Ball is loose. And it looks like Culpepper got it back at the 25, but it'll bring up a fourth down for Minnesota. As much as Culpepper has improved with his interceptions, he still has a fumbling problem. He does. They, they came with a blitz off the outside. Gerald Hayes and Jay. James Darling, and uh, they just took the ball right out of his hands. They swiped at it. So Anquan Bolden, the rookie from Florida State, is going to the Pro Bowl as a receiver, back to return the punt for the Cardinals. Leo Aragus to kick it. Came into the game with a 38-yard average. This is Bolden. Bolden down at the 38-yard line. The Cardinals trailing by one. Get the football back. See if Josh McCown can get him the lead. Smith. Well, you certainly hope now. What a special, special guy. What was he like to tackle? Oh, uh, he was he was the kind of guy where if you hit him hard, you, you want him to get up and, and say something to you. And he'd just get up and say, hey, nice play, Bill. Nice hit, Bill. It frustrates you even more. Oh, yeah, you, you hated it. You want you wanted to you wanted him to say something bad to you so you could say something back but he would he wouldn't do it yeah priest holmes with two touchdowns today setting the single season mark that evan smith used to own and dave mcginnis talked about how much he enjoyed even in one season getting to coach a guy like evan dave mcginnis said not only is he pure class but this guy has hall of fame character and yes he will be going to the hall of fame he's a special man and he's really glad that he was able to coach Emmett Smith. Emmett with six carries in the game today. Make that five carries for 17 yards. Emmett actually, uh, as we see Cardinal and Viking fans enjoying themselves here in Tempe, and Emmett getting a kick out of it. You know, he saved all those footballs. He actually auctioned off the one to charity that he set the, the rushing record with. 
which was a nice gesture on his part. He's that classy a guy. On first and ten, McCown. McCown goes down back around the line of scrimmage, and Kevin Williams, the rookie from Oklahoma State, you're going to see the pocket. Him down. You're going to see the pocket close in on McCown here, and he just gets antsy. This is when you need to be able to make a throw. Where are you going? Why are you Why are you getting antsy in the pocket? There's nobody coming down on you. And Kevin Williams certainly in the running for Rookie of the Year honors defensively. And of course, Anquan Bolden on the other side of the ball. Offensive Rookie of the Year possibly as he is going to the Pro Bowl. Second and ten. McCow. Pass complete to ship. Marcel ship across the 40, but that'll bring up third down. Corey Chavis making the stop. Corey Chavis going to the Pro Bowl. A guy who uh, watches, he watches more film than Roger Ebert. Oh, he does. Uh, his mother for Christmas when he was young would give him blank tapes. And what he would do is he would just record sporting events. That was the best gift you could give Corey Chavis when, when he was a kid. His, Blank tapes. And now he gets other guys to watch tape with him. Like Brian Russell, one who has benefited, and they learn tendencies of offensive teams, and it certainly has paid off. On third and seven, Emmett Smith in the backfield. McCown. On the run. Ball is loose. The Cardinals get it back. But they'll be forced to punt. And Bolden frustrated. Very frustrated, rightfully so. He was wide open. Josh McCown running for his life. The Vikings protecting a that seven to six lead. Of the first quarter. Josh McCown at his third NFL start has had a tough time. Nine of 18, 98 yards passing. No touchdowns, no turnovers. Not showing a... He's not showing a lot of poise in that pocket. You know, he's getting real antsy. I think he's got receivers open downfield. Anquan Bolden was really frustrated on that last play. So they have to punt again. Scott Player, Keenan Howery, back to receive for the Vikings at the 40. Brought down hard at the 43-yard line by Michael Young. Let's check in with JV in Los Angeles. Hey, fellas, take a look. Uh, Denver still trying to hang in, having to rely on getting on the scoreboard by way of the field goal. Jason Elam, 31-yard field goal to narrow the Green Bay lead to seven. It's 10-3, under six to play in the third period. Back to Chris and Bill. Thanks, James. And here, the Vikings, who trailed 6-0 at the half, have taken the lead on the Mo Williams touchdown run of the third quarter as we play on the fourth, and Ontario Smith in the backfield on first and ten. Culpepper completes. Wayne Bates with the catch up near the first down marker. He's been active today. The Packers have that lead, so at the moment, you see the NFC North, if Minnesota wins, it's game set match if both teams lose the Vikings win the division the wild cards are already set in the NFC so the NFC North division is what's being battled for here Smith on the backfield Moss in motion throws high what hand to catch from Randy Moss and he goes out of bounds well it didn't gain a lot but it looked big time that's one special guy right there. What a catch. There's very few people in this league that can make catches like this. Watch this with the right hand. One hand. There was a great catch of the 49er game yesterday. Brandon Lloyd making a one-handed grab. On, on the sideline? Yeah. That was phenomenal. Although it didn't pan out as Seattle won to work its way into the playoffs as a wild card. Second and ten. Ontario Smith. Speaking of uh, one-handed catches, being a linebacker, you can appreciate these. Anquan Bolden. He's made a lot of great catches all this year. Marvin Harrison. His team going to the playoffs. The concentration is unbelievable there. U USC playing in the Rose Bowl. That's Mike Williams, only a sophomore. And Moss, well, his didn't gain a lot. 
but he showed you how talented he is. Charge timeout. Arizona. This is their first charge team timeout. Third and five for the Vikings, and the Cardinals call time. Minnesota has the lead, marching toward the NFC North title. The 2004 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Randy Moss is their idol. Last week, wearing the Afro along with the Nate Burleson and a couple of the other receivers. Afro, as it stood for America's finest receivers on Saturday or Sunday. And they... Uh, they stopped with the hair this week on third and five from the Cardinal 41. Bo Williams in the backfield. Cardinals backing up on defense. Culpepper fakes. Blitz. Complete first down. Bo Williams on the catch. What you saw there is they were faking the blitz. They were up in the line of scrimmage. And they were trying to get Dante Culpepper to uh, audible out of what he had called. You see, they were up in the line. And then what they do is they all drop back into pass coverage. He had plenty of time to throw that football. He actually could have waited. Total yards this half. The Vikings over 110. Arizona minus 17. On first down with a one-point lead. Fourth quarter. Culpepper. Brought down by Wendell Bryant. He had time. That'll bring up a second down for the Vikings. Green Bay has added to their I lead. I think uh, he was looking for Randy Moss here. But Ronaldo Hill does a good job not, not biting on that fake. They ca actually called that a run, that last one-handed grab by Randy Moss, because it was behind the line of scrimmage. Ontario Smith in the backfield. Packers leading 17-3 in the third quarter in their game. We're in the fourth quarter here. Second and nine. Culpepper. At the 28-yard line goes down. Let's check in with James Brown. Hey, Chris, you mentioned it. Here's the pictures to back you up. Amon Green, two-yard run. That capping what was 49 yards on the ground that Amon Green had on this drive. Green Bay, as you've already indicated, Chris, in a must-win situation. Now up by 14. Back to Chris and Bill. Thanks, JB. The Vikings, as they said, want to earn it. It would be unacceptable to back into the playoffs, especially the way they started out the season, 6-0, and, and then falling to 3-6. and six. But Mike Tice said they're playing their best ball right now at 3rd and 7. They're playing with a lot of confidence right now. Culpepper. Dante Culpepper has another first down. Run out of bounds by Ronaldo Hill. Nate Burleson helping out with a nice block. That was a pickup of 11. This really adds another dimension to an offense when a quarterback can do this to a defense. He has the pocket starts to close in on him. And what he does, he does, he just steps in and takes off for the first down. And if you're the Cardinal defense, you say, wait a minute, three straight runs from Dante Culpepper, all those weapons, and that's what we got to worry about? First and ten, Ontario Smith. To the 15. Well, if you're focusing on taking away the receivers, there's going to be something that opens up, and that's what's opening up is running running room for Dante Culpepper through the middle. The Vikings have dominated this second half after trailing 6 nothing at the break. Earlier in the game, they went on fourth and one around the Cardinal one. They missed a field goal. Holding on to a one-point lead, trying to get more. Second down. They need eight. Kelly Campbell inside the 10. Kelly is their speed guy. This is a guy that can really run with the football. And he just takes a reverse on this one. You're going to see him right there. He just takes off. And there's someone there to stop, but he just outruns Kenny King. And Dexter Jackson hits him out, out of bounds. Kelly Campbell, second-year player from Georgia Tech, who played for George O'Leary, defensive coordinator of the Vikings at Tech. On third and short, Bo Williams in. They need one. 
Culpepper keeps. First down, Vikings. Let's check in again with JB. Hey, Chris, we showed you the Armand Green touchdown to put the pack up by 14. Take a look at Adrian Madis of Denver. Kickoff return, 83 yards inside the 10 of the pack. And indeed, obviously, they're threatening. We'll keep you abreast. Back to Chris and Bill. Big plays like that get you right back into the football game. Rocco is in the playoffs already, not playing Clinton Portis today. First down and goal from the seven. Ontario Smith on the backfield. Culpepper. Moss. Touchdown. There is a big mismatch between Randy Moss and David Barrett, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. You can only keep Randy Moss out of the end zone so long. Right here, one-on-one, -on -one. he's up, tries to get his hands on him, just a quick throw and catch. Makes it look so easy. 17 touchdowns for Randy Moss. We told you the only player in NFL history to average a touchdown and more than 100 receiving yards a game for all 16 games. And the Vikings move a little closer on the Randy Moss touchdown to nailing down the NFC North division title. With Bill Romanowski, Chris Myers, and Randy Moss said the defense gives him a boost. When they do their job and come over and say it's your turn, that fires him up even more. It does. Corey Chavis. Kevin Williams, Greg Beaker, often come to him on the sideline and said, we just made a play. It's now time, your time to make a play. And sure enough, he's been doing that. It's an eight-point lead as the Vikings kick it off. Josh Scobie recovers his own fumble and gets out across the 30, near the 35-yard line. Corey Chavis brings him down. 8.48 to go in regulation. And the playoffs continue next weekend. 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific on Fox as the wild card round of the NFC. The Vikings, Carolina will be involved. Seattle and Dallas have already clinched wild card spots. For Randy Moss, a career high 111 catches this season as he continues to pile up the numbers. First and 10 for the Cardinals. Bolden in motion. McCown. Ball is batted in the air, and it looks like the Vikings have intercepted it. Kevin Williams, the rookie from Oklahoma State, comes down with it. What a play. Beautiful. The rookie has started every game. They moved him inside, and he comes up big. You're going to see him right here. I don't know who deflects it, but he's able to come up. Let's see. He deflected it and came up with it. What a play by Kevin Williams. From Arkansas, a small town. They say he's a country kid. Same hometown as Bear Bryant. George O'Leary said moving him inside has really made a difference for this uh, Minnesota defense. It happened before the Seattle game. They've been a different defense. Michael Bennett. At the 25-yard line, just short of the 25, of the Cardinals brought down. Adrian Wilson, Ronaldo Hill on the stop. So the Vikings, who built that 6-0 record earlier in the year with turnovers, get one here to maybe add to a 14-6 lead. Kevin Williams was playing defensive end, but George O'Leary said, by, by putting him inside, he would rather have a guy cause havoc on the inside than a guy coming off the end. Second and 17, Bennett gets it again. Goes down at the 23-yard line of Arizona. Nice hit right there by Ronaldo Hill. You know, it's been a story of two halves for the Vikings. They were shut out in the first half. Look at the uh, total yards. So it's, it's not as if they weren't moving the ball. It was just that they weren't scoring. Three sacks in the second half have made a difference. And they have not turned it over themselves. Mo Williams in the backfield as Mike Tice looks on. Third and four. Oh. 
Whistle blows and the penalty flags fly. False start, offense, right tackle, five yard penalty remains, third down. Mike Rosenthal, fifth year player out of Notre Dame, signed as a free agent from the Giants, called for the penalty. Mike Tice sure wasn't happy about that. You know, he coached this offensive line for five years, and he is really tough on his guys up front. When we were talking to him yesterday, he really didn't have much to say about them. You know, and I think this, this offensive line is one of the best in the NFL. Dante Culpepper had a lot to say about him. Very complimentary on third and nine. Culpepper to throw underneath through the hands of Mo Williams. It'll bring up fourth down. Dave, Dave McGinnis had great things to say about him. Like you said, Dante, everybody talks about this offensive line. Dave McGinnis and what could be his last game as head coach of the Cardinals. He'll meet with the ownership within a week. There's been talk that maybe Dennis Green or Jim Fossil might come here to take over. Well, he's my coach of the year. You're he, won, he won three games this year with not very much talent. Well, and his defense has played very well today. 46-yard attempt for Elling, who missed one earlier. It's up and hits the upright, but goes through. It's good. The Vikings with a 17-6 lead. Minnesota, 648 away from capturing the NFC North, and things appear to be bouncing their way. Vikings with a 17-6 lead. Randy Moss on the headset. Ellen kicks it off. Josh Scobie for Arizona across the 30. Up near the 40, where the Cardinals will take over. Trailing by 11. Dave McGinnis, you know, he's buddies with Tice. In fact, when McGinnis almost took the Chicago Bear job, he talked about hiring Mike Tice as his offensive coordinator. There's a chance that with George O'Leary going to Central Florida, leaving as defensive coordinator of Minnesota, that Tice could hire McGinnis as the defensive coordinator in Minnesota, if he so wishes. And when I asked Dave about that, he said, well, if you're asking me if I could work for Mike Tice, yes, he said. That's something I could do. We'll be back here in a moment. Vikings leading 17-6. Gerald Hayes, the Cardinals, injuring his arm, walking off. You know, Bill, you played for a lot of different coaches. Anybody you would have liked to have played for that you haven't? Well, for sure, Bill Parcells. Would have loved to have played for him. But also Dave McGinnis. What a great guy, a player's coach. His players have played hard for him today, but trailing by 11. First down from the 40. McCown. Complete to Bolden. The teal on the stop. You know, the Minnesota defense under O'Leary doing a good job. They had been giving up 342 yards a game. Today, only 129 yards. Picking up the offensive pace right here with a no huddle. And there's a look at George O'Leary on second and eight. McCown throwing. Intended for Bolden, incomplete. Let's check in with James Brown. Hey, fellas, take a look at the stopping Denver on a fourth and goal. First play afterwards. Favre hands off to who else? I'm on Green. 20 carries, a Green Bay record. 218 yards rushing. That is a 98-yard touchdown. And guess what? Green Bay has just scored another touchdown. They've done their part to ensure they get into the playoffs. Obviously, they'll wait to see what happens with Minnesota. Wow. Chris and Bill. A lot of scoring there, James, whether it's Favre or Green. It won't matter if the Vikings hold on here. Third and six. McCown. Throwing for Nathan Poole. Incomplete. Great coverage downfield by the Minnesota defense. But there's only so long you can stay with coverage. Nathan Poole here has the ball thrown to him. And it would have been a tough catch to make, but you got to make those catches when they come to you. And Nathan Poole played Randy Moss on the scout team at practice this week. We were watching Friday, and he made a nice one-handed catch. Arizona, the second timeout. 
that drew a cheer from some of the other teams that were watching. San Diego leading the Raiders, so if Arizona loses, if those scores hold up, the Cardinals, yes, would have the first pick in the upcoming draft. What do you think, Eli Manning? Him or Roethlisberger? Well, I, I think it'd be Eli Manning. It I would, think he would fit in well for this team. He would help sell tickets. Eli Manning, you'll see him in the SBC Cotton Bowl, January 2nd on Fox. He's supposed to be a little bit more looser than his brother Peyton, as talented. And a guy who could sell tickets, you know, they have a new stadium in Arizona in 2006. And Ben Roethlisberger, the junior who has declared he's going pro, a bigger and a stronger arm, according to scouts. And projected first rounder, these guys are thought of, at least from what I hear from scouts, Bill, as one and one A. Well, you know, either, either direction, you, you're winning. And whoever the coach is, if there is a coaching change in Arizona, that may have a lot to say or figure in who they would select. Jeff Blake, the free agent signee, looking on is Josh McCown on fourth and six. The Cardinals go for it. Don't forget the Cotton Bowl on Fox, January 2nd. McCown throwing, completing to Bolden, reaching across. And I don't know if he had the catch or the first down, but when he made the effort, the ball came out. The Vikings are saying they stopped him. He's not very happy right now, Anquan Bolden. It looked like when he made the catch bill that he had he didn't have the first down. He needed that extra reach. Yeah. Well, I think it was a great effort. And you like the call going for it. Obviously, you're a three Absolutely. and Absolutely. Why not? You know. You're two scores down. Why not try to spoil things for this team? It's a nice tackle there. I mean, you got to go where the ball hit, don't the you? The Arizona runner was ruled down by contact. Result of the play, first down. All right, so the Cardinals get a break and get the first down. Let's quickly check in with JV in Los Angeles. Hey, Chris, take a look here. Denver's Adrian Medis muffs the kickoff, picks it up, has it ripped out by James Whitney, recovered by Marcus Wilkins in the end zone for the score. Green Bay up 31-3. Minnesota absolutely has to win back with Chris and Bill. When it rains, it pours. Lambeau. Up in Lambeau. Yeah, but you know, that's out of the last 16 games on grass for the Vikings. That's their only win has been at Lambeau, which started this year. They're trying to win on grass here. This could be their second. McCown on first down. Throwing deep for Bolden. Up. Three Vikings there defending. Well, he threw it into tri triple coverage there. Anquan Bolton right here in the slot. Basically, everybody closes in on him after that ball's in the air. Well, Al almost comes down with that play. Defenders have talked about him as one of his skills, Bolton, that he adjusts in the air to the ball and sees it quite well. He's very talented that way, but Denar Walker was able to slap the ball out at the last minute. Only four catches for Bolton today. The Viking defense has kept him out of the picture. That's for Brian Johnson, who has a catch at the 35, and it's a first down for the Cardinals. Beautiful catch right here. This is one thing that he hasn't done well, is make catches downfield. But here, in between two defenders, makes a great grab. On first down, trailing by 11. Cardinals have to be thinking a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal. Kevin Williams is coming alive. Interception, sack. This guy is dominating this football game. So much for rookies hitting the wall. Right here. Makes a quick move. That's the Leonard, Leonard Davis. He had him just spinning. Fifth sack for the Vikings. Two for Kevin Williams. So he has nine and a half. McCown. Penalty flag down, and McCown is down at midfield. Packers are leading with under 13 minutes to play at home. Beating up on the Broncos 31-3. But they'll miss the playoffs if the Vikings hold on and win here. So 
see what the penalty is. Only three teams from last year are in the playoffs this year. Holding defense number 96. Five-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Billy Lyon called for the infraction, and it gives the Cardinals a first down. I think they were trying to run a little screen there, and I think he just grabbed the receiver. But the guy that's really doing a great job is Kevin Williams on Chris Dishman. Just dominating this football game. The Cardinal offensive line, for as big, as strong as they are, have not been as productive as the people thought they would be. Just not very athletic as an offensive line. On first down, McCown complete to Abbott Smith at the 40. Mike Mateel making the stop. One of those young linebackers, along with Nick Rogers, E.J. Henderson, they... They add some speed to the defense. In the nickel situation, they bring in these two rookies, Mike Natiel and E.J. Henderson, and that's exactly what they do. They add speed to this defense. Do the Vikings have a championship defense, in your opinion? When you talk postseason, it's a different level. They have a championship offense, and sometimes your best defense is a great offense. <laughs> McCown to throw. Another sack for the Vikings. That Chris Holvan in. Chris Hovan, who admittedly has not had a great year. Chris Hovan coming alive for his second sack of the season. Here he is. Oh. Oh, he crossed and just beat Garcia to the quarterback. Third and long for McCown. Hovan came in leading the team and quarterback hurries with 20. Fourth-year player out of Boston College. Third down, McCown to throw. He's got some time and has a man. High and a nice catch by Nathan Poole up around the 11-yard line. He had all day to throw right there. And Poole made a nice adjustment on a he high throw. Made a real nice adjustment. But the key to that is the offensive line blocking for him. When you give... Josh McCown, that much time to throw the football, he'll complete it every time. Under three minutes to play in regulation. Cardinals are down by 11. The Vikings are that close to the NFC North division title and knocking the Packers out of the playoff picture. Complete to Bolden at the five and out of bounds. They're making it look easy right now. Going right through this defense. You wonder where this was earlier in the game. Well, I think they needed to open things up and get the ball downfield, and that's what they couldn't do. And even if Bolden isn't there, Nathan Poole helping to make the big play. Cardinals have one timeout remaining. From the five. Second down. McCown complete to Nathan Poole near the first down marker. It'll bring up third down for Arizona, obviously fourth down territory. They only need one. That's a scary pass to make down here on the right near the end zone. One of those quick outs. And Emmett Smith in the backfield. 2.17 to go. Emmett Smith goes forward and we'll see it looks like he didn't get the first down let's check the first down marker and watch where Emmett goes this is a two minute warning he was fighting for it that's for sure so it's going to be fourth down for the Cardinals. We'll see what they do. Trailing by 11 when we come back. It's to have you with us. We're at the two-minute warning. It's fourth and short. Vikings have a 17-6 lead trying to close in on the division title. Emmett Smith, I Number tell you what. 67 is eligible. 67 is eligible. Emmett Smith was really upset. Now, Chris Dishman is the lineman, the, the blocker that is eligible here. He's a guy who could get the ball on a passing option. 
McCall. Rose. Touchdown Cardinals. Steve Bush on the receiving end. And the Vikings can't count on that division title just yet. Well, I think Emmett was upset because he wasn't getting the ball, but it worked out for the team right there. McCown, with extra effort, made that play happen. Well, Emmett Smith had his chance earlier when he carried on third down and didn't get the first. Looks like they're going for it, but a little play action. He just rolls out, is able to hit Steve Bush in the end zone. Steve Bush, the backup tight end from Arizona State. Played his we college will ball. review the previous play. I think they want to make sure, and again, under two minutes, it's the officials who make the call on the replay, just to make sure that Bush had possession, held the ball above the ground, and kept his feet in. Now, as they review this, obviously the Cardinals are going to go for two, because then that, if they make it, puts them within a field goal to tie. Well, Emmett. I just cannot believe how upset he was. You know, he's looking at the sideline, and he is just, what is going on? He's saying, what is going on here? And he still looks like he's upset. Well, let's take another look at the touchdown. Again, a fourth down play. We are reviewing to see whether or not the pass was complete. You couldn't really tell from that angle tough to see right there but initially when we saw it appeared that Steve Bush had the catch and he just fell to the ground he's not a guy that gets a lot of throws you know a lot of balls thrown to yeah him. obviously the Vikings didn't expect that either no. if this is uh, overruled or if they find some reason to disallow this the Vikings would take over possession of the football and try and run out the clock Arizona has just one timeout remaining trying to figure out if Emmett was upset because he wasn't getting the ball or if it was you know a lineman was late running out onto the field there's Steve Bush who made the touchdown catch that's being reviewed it's a boot review with under two minutes to go you know we pointed out in the first half the Cardinals are the only team in the NFL who have not scored a touchdown in the final two minutes of the half or of the end of the game they could change that if this is not overturned I don't know if he caught that ball. Chris. Let's think ahead for a moment. Really, you're going to doubt this, huh? I'm, a, I'm going to doubt well, you're, this you're now. Well, you're a defensive guy, so we, uh, we have to kind of put an asterisk by your opinion. You could see by the reaction from the defense when they were looking right at it that they were well, like, it, no way. All right, he here, did now, not. Does he use the ground to, you see, to, to make the catch, to keep the ball in his hands? You can't really tell you because McCown tell because and of the Williams are in the way. Well, let's think ahead. Let's say they they don't over. Well, let's hear from the officials because Arizona will go for two. Then if they get the two, would you onside kick it? Well, absolutely. You only have one timeout remaining. Why not? You're going to have to. After reviewing the play, and All right, I'm, I'm going to interpret because there was a short at his wiring, but it's a touchdown. So Steve Bush made the catch, and the Cardinals are going for the two-point conversion with 154 to play in regulation. Now, if they make this, and again, they only have one timeout, then they're within three, so we could see the onside kick. They are definitely making things interesting. Emmett Smith on the backfield, still letting off some steam. McCown throwing to Emmett Smith, who doesn't get in. E.J. Henderson with a big-time tackle. Nice play by a rookie. Really nice play. See, sees the play the whole way. We'll watch on this replay right here. He's right there, and he's eyeing him the whole way. And when he takes off, so does an EJ. And it's his speed that makes up for it right there. Well, and if Emmett Smith had kept running to the far sideline, 
He may have had a shot, but E.J. Henderson, the rookie from Maryland, making the play. That's exactly why Mike Tice wants E.J. Henderson on the field and Mike Nathiel. You know, these are two rookies that have a lot of speed, and they felt like this defense was slow in the middle. All right, but the Vikings aren't out of it yet because an onside kick, should the Cardinals get it, a touchdown would give them the lead. Well, the... They have to get the onside, and they have to score a touchdown to win this football game. Might be a good time to mention the producer of today's game, Larry Lancaster, director Mike Roy, associate director Artie DeRazzo, broadcast associate David Duvall, vice president of field operations Jerry Steinberg, technical producer Joe Stevens, studio show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy, our audio mixer Jim Hilson, studio technical supervisor Jack Simmons, highlight supervisor Janice Casaza, and the senior producer of Fox Sports, Bill Brown. Executive producers are Ed Gorin and David Hill. The onside kick. They got it. And the they got the happened. kick. Damian Anderson came down with it. A reserve running back. Exactly how it's designed. Make it bounce up into the air. Get a deflection. Come down with the football. The kick was put by a Minnesota receiver and caught by an Arizona player. First down. Otherwise, the ball would have to travel 10 yards on its own, but the minute a Viking player touches it, it's a free ball. You're going to see Damian Anderson right there. They they touch the football, and he's able to come up it with a really like, smart play by Damian Anderson. It looked like Klein Saucer had his hands on it, if I was seeing that properly. But the Cardinals have it with one timeout. McCown slips, throws. Brian Johnson go. running hand in hand with Denar Walker. I was going to say, they got to call that. But who do you call it on? Denar Walker. He's holding them the whole way. Pass and appearance. Defense number 20. Automatic. First down. Right here, Denard Walker and Brian Johnson. Here's where he starts to grab him. He's basically tackling him. Tries to get position on him. I played with Denard in Denver. And he has the ability to run with you, but he also has a tendency to hold too much. What about the position that Brian Johnson had? A 30-yard pickup on another Viking penalty. First down. McCow throws complete to Evan Smith, who steps out of bounds wisely at about the 26-yard line. Denard Walker over there. Offensive line did a great job. He had all day to throw, and he finally looked to the right where Emmett Smith was wide open with nobody near him. The Packers are winning easily at Lambeau against the Broncos. The Vikings need to win or they could miss the playoffs after starting 6-0 to open the season. Their defense is on the spot. Second and five. They're in a nickel situation with those young linebackers. McCown. Complete. Nathan Poole. Inside the 15, around the 12-yard line. Arizona has another first down. A 13-yard pickup. It's first and 10 Cardinals from the 13. Block running. I'll tell you what, this offensive line is coming alive. We need a play by this defensive line. If they're going to make a play, they got to make it now. Already six sacks of the game for the Vikings defense. The give is to Emmett Smith. Mike Nateel stepped up and made a nice hit there. At Lambeau Field, some 70,000 fans are watching on the Jumbotron, watching closely this game, rooting for the Cardinals, because if Arizona can pull it out, the Packers will win the division and go to the playoffs. McCown in trouble and goes down. Kevin Williams, his third sack of the game. This guy has been unstoppable in the second half. Arizona. Cardinals burn their final timeout. timeout. 
So trailing by five. You can see a great move by Kevin Williams here. He just beats Spikes. He's basically getting triple team. He beats the triple team for the sack. Watch him. There's one, there's two, and then Emmett tries to get a piece of him. Emmett wants nothing to do with him. A bit of irony in it all, a, a shrine to football, Lambeau Field, where fans are sitting and watching this game in Tempe, Arizona at Sun Devil Stadium, where the NFC North Division title will be decided. And a rookie from Oklahoma State, Kevin Williams, with ten and a half sacks this season, three in this game. Keeping the Cardinals out of the end zone. Eight sacks in the game for Minnesota. I think that's why George O'Leary moved him inside. Got him away from the end, put him inside, let him cause havoc on offensive guards and centers. Third and 14. 31 seconds remaining. From the 17 of Minnesota. Got to take a shot for the end zone here. No timeouts for the Cardinals. McCow. The ball is loose. Lance Johnstone applying the heat. The Cardinals got it back. On fourth down. They, they, they got to hurry up and run a play. They don't have time to spike it. Come on, Josh. Hurry up. If you're going to run a play, you got to run it. This is the ball game. Fourth down. Five. Four. They're watching in Green Bay. McCow. For the end zone. It's caught. Nathan Paul has a touchdown. Wow. Can you believe it? The Cardinals just upset the Minnesota Vikings. The Packers win the NFC North. Minnesota goes home. What a game. Josh McCown comes up with the play of a lifetime. His third NFL start on fourth the down. The play was ruled out, out, force out, touchdown. Nathan Poole, did you hear the official? That's the extra point. The official ruling the force out. And the Cardinals. Can you believe it? With no time left on fourth down, there are Viking players watching, stunned on the field. And they're doubting whether he was in, but the official ruled that it was a force out. They're playing for their coach, Dave McGinnis. What a play. What a job. One foot was in. He was forced out. The official quick to call that. And this will be under a booth review. The second under these final two minutes. This Minnesota team is stunned. Look at them. They're absolutely stunned. And I know they're stunned at Lambeau Field, where the Packers have a 31-3 lead with two minutes remaining. Here's a look again on fourth down. And you see the clock. No time No outs. time left. The play was ruled as a force out touchdown. We we will review, however, we will review as to whether the receiver maintained possession of the ball. He only had one foot in bounds there. But they quickly ruled it a force out, and this will be under review as Viking players await the result. This is as big a review as it gets because it affects not just these two teams here, it affects the Packers. Yes, it does. Look. I don't, do you think he could have got that foot in? I don't know if he could have. They would have been better off if they would have just left him alone. And there is Nathan Poole in what could be Dave McGinnis' last game as the head coach of the Cardinals. His good friend, Mike Tice, trying to get his team into the playoffs. And Josh McCown in his third NFL start against this Viking defense, heaving it in the end zone with no time left. What a football game. Can you believe it, Chris? What, what a play by Josh McCown. And to add to the drama, Nathan Poole with one foot in and quickly the officials ruling force out. Nobody is leaving. 
half this stadium filled with Viking fans, and I'll bet they're all standing in Green Bay. During the course of the play, of course, the only reviewable portion of the play is whether the receiver maintained control when he hit the ground. He did, ruling touchdown. It's a touchdown, Cardinals. The Packers will win the NFC North. The Vikings, after starting out 6-0, will lose on the last day of the regular season and miss the playoffs. My rule, we must attempt an extra point. And the official pointing out that by rule, you do have to kick the extra point or at least attempt it. And we pointed out that the Cardinals were the only team this year